good afternoon and uh, uh, good evening to some people in the Midwest and East. Uh, this is uh, Abdul Ghani. I'm uh, the associate dean. Uh, uh, we had uh, the presented similar webinars before, and the last time, uh, unfortunately, we had some technical uh, difficulties. So I'll try and cover the whole subject again today. Um, my subject will be, uh, in the beginning, it will be more information with changes in policies that are extremely important. Some of them are permanent and some transitory for uh, due to the COVID pandemic. Um, and this will affect especially the third and the fourth year uh, students who are in clinical training and you will be getting ready for residency. The later part of my presentation will be in a lot more detail about the process of examination, the uh, factors required uh, and uh, for application, for the application process, um, the interview process, the process of selection and post interview and finally uh, communication with the programs. So let's start with the first slide. Uh, I mean. Next. Um, there has been tremendous changes due to the pandemic and uh, and they are still ongoing. We are uh, pretty current with this. Every week or two weeks, we receive uh, changes and guidelines from either USMLE or from N uh, NBME, from the National Board, and most importantly, quite often from ECFMG. And they are communicated immediately in a very timely manner by our clinical department to all the students. Next slide, please. Um, so what are the changes uh, in the policy? And most of you are aware of it. It was uh, announced on the February of 2020. The, ch the changes are number one, uh, from January 22, 2022, your first step one grades uh, will be reported as pass or fair rather than the three numerical grade. Number two, uh, uh, instead of six, you'll be only allowed four attempts to take step exams. And finally, uh, number three, uh, you cannot take the uh, clinical skills exam, the CS, uh, before passing the step one. Uh, and from now onwards, there will be a lot more emphasis on questions that are related to in step one to communication skills and in step two professionalism, ethical, legal uh, issues, patient safety and system and practice based learning. They were supposed to start in May and July. Uh, that has been moved up and now those taking uh, step one and step two exams in the later part of the year will start seeing these questions in October and November. The ECFMG and USMLE had informed us that they will send us some sample question and they are still developing and we haven't received any. Next slide, Steve. Um, there are some additional changes uh, uh, and these are for uh, ECMG certification requirements. And uh, some of these are only for 2021 match. I want to emphasize this, some are permanent, some are only during this pandemic period where they keep changing and modifying the requirements. So the requirements for ECMG certification during this period is step one, the, the scores, uh, there is no change in the examination. In step two, CK exam will be again as normal, while in the step two CS, the clinical skills exam has been suspended for 12 to 18 months. Now, this is important, as I said before, the third and fourth year students. If you qualify uh, to uh, get exemption from this uh, CA clinical skill exam, uh, the ECFMG has developed five pathways. And if you happen to fulfill any of the five pathways, you do not need to give this clinical skill exam. Next slide, please. And these five pathways are uh, uh, enumerated here. Most of them don't apply for all awesome graduates. Um, number three will apply to be eligible for exemption from the clinical skill exam. And the requirements for that are 
those who have graduated after January 2018 and a certification by the school to attest to your clinical skills. And thankfully, we have OSCE as a requirement for our graduation. Uh, and uh, this will fulfill your requirement. So those uh, awesome st students who have credited medical schools and by a World F uh, Federation of Medical Education, plus the graduation and this uh, a certificate attesting to your clinical skills. And all our students from awesome and all graduates do qualify this. So we are pretty well set. There's only one change and this was announced later that all IMGs, irrespective you fall into number one to five category, will have to pass an English proficiency test exam. It's called OET uh, and it, it will start in August 2020. So those who are beginning to look into applying in the third and fourth year, you better start uh, looking into taking this exam. It's a very small exam um, and uh, it requires a basic pass uh, pass rate of 430. The deadline for the uh, exam, so everybody who's applying for the academic year and the match of 2021 has to have a certificate showing that you have taken this test and passed it. And the deadline for that test is end of December 2020. Next slide, please. So uh, you already saw in number three, the importance of accreditation uh, by accrediting bodies for the medical schools. And uh, uh, it used to be called Rule 2023. Due to the pandemic, this has extended, we got an extension of another year. Now it's called Rule 2024. And uh, the, uh, the importance, uh, I cannot uh, overemphasize the importance of the accreditation. Approximately 70 Caribbean schools, there are only 15 that are accredited. And Awesome ha happens to be one of those 15. And this rule is so important, I'm going to read it verbatim. Uh, says that students graduating from non-accredited schools, that is, except 15, all the rest of the Caribbean schools, after 2024 will not be allowed to apply for residency training or license to practice in US. Which means those who st students who are joining medical school this year, in 2024, you have to make sure that your school is accredited. Other, all those four years of hard work, training, expense, will be of no use if you want to take the exams, uh, do residency in US and to practice in US. Next slide, please. So what, what does the process of uh, resident application consists of? It consists of a lot of tests that you have. One of the basic tests is NBME, and that is our requirement, awesome, as well as several medical schools, inclu including US medical schools. They also require you to pass USMLE, and what it does is uh, allows you to certify uh, to, uh, to apply for residency. It does not guarantee that you get a residency. So it might, if you have good scores, it will guarantee you an interview. Whether it will, whether you'll be successful in the match or not, it requires a lot more, um, a lot more documentation, performance, and passing some more tests. I'll come to that later. Um, and it is a requirement for ES, ECFMG certification. Next slide, please. So the national board exam that we emphasize so much and some students complain, why do we have NBME three times? Why do we have so many NBMEs? And, and the reason is this is from East national board examination. This is not uh, my statement, the, the content covered on the Comprehensive Basic Science Examination, CBSE, is based on USMLE Step 1. It's not exactly, but it is based, so it is helpful. And the CBSE is basically a shorter version of Step 1. And that's why we emphasize that our graduates should pass NBME before they take the Step 1. Next slide, please. 
and this is not the only exam if you are going to become a doctor you're going to be giving exams all your life so you better be prepared for it um, at the uh, end of all your training at the end of graduation you know you're very happy you throw the cap with your gown and everything in the air and said this is the end of it I'm not going to take any more examinations that's what I said after my graduation but then here is a surprise you'll be taking so not the steps and NBME anymore but you will be taking board exams you'll be taking specialty exams you'll be taking licensing exams you'll be taking recertification exams you'll be taking continuing education exams and a lot more exams that you can think of so you better get used to it now that you'll be taking exams for the rest of your life I took three recertification exams before I retired next slide please and unfortunately all these exams are nerve-wracking and it is normal to be nervous and if somebody says they are not they're lying next slide so there are there are several types of national board uh, exams and each are quite relevant and at different level of your training starting with the basic science exam uh, there are several of these available and to help you with passing these exams there are several practice self-assessment exams for step one they used to be 13 15 16 17 in color blue they have all been eliminated and the new ones are the only one the retained is 18 18 20 21 22 23 and 24 and these are excellent learning resources so I usually suggest you take at least two or three of these um, during your preparation for your step one that will help you analyze this find out your strengths and weaknesses make changes as you go along in your study plan and take another one so you take one every three to four weeks and see how your progress is now, then the next one is equally important I want to emphasize this most of the students unfortunately don't pay any attention the NBME shelf exam this is for all the core rotations that you take at the end of each core rotation you are required to take a shelf copy exam um, it, uh, it accounts for 20 percent of your grade in the final grade of your core rotations the remaining 80 percent comes from your preceptor evaluation and because of this a lot of students don't pay any attention let me tell you this is an excellent preparation for step 2 CK because all the questions will come from your experience during your core rotation and shelf copy is an excellent reflection of your knowledge base of your core rotation and that is what to step to CK is all about next slide please uh, what resources can you use for step ones these are all mentioned here and I think dr. Arja has also sent uh, uh, in our uh, uh, clinical manual what the recommend resources are um, there are several this doesn't mean that if you have if you use three resources uh, you'll get certain uh, a passing score if you had five you'll have better passing score if you have ten it doesn't work, work that way and it I still unfortunately see a lot of students using too many resources I mean the the first aid uh, and the uh, and the questions on the U world and USMLE X lecturio sketchy uh, the topics and the subjects are the same biochemistry and physiology and pathology taught is no different in first aid or that you see in uh, U world or lecturio um, I am not a great fan of uh, the review courses which are very extensive and, ex and expensive review courses as it is defined it's review after you have already prepared for the step one there's no point in taking review courses if you're not prepared you can take review courses and say oh let me do only half of physiology I'll catch up the other half in my review course 
it doesn't do, work that way and I'm not too keen on tutors so my basic recommendation is after you've started preparing and done your research I would like to I'd like you to have one book and one QBank and keep repeating until you become you get uh, you master this um, I marked here Pathoma uh, it's good for pathology uh, most of the students that uh, I've asked and have reviewed and and similarly in sketchy uh, I understand the micro is better than the pharma pharma you can still uh, stick with dr. Bala's notes I understand they are very good so uh, and another point to remember if you are doing pathology from pathoma and micro from sketchy and pharma from dr. Bala's notes there's no point in uh, doing first aid and reading pathology from first aid, pathology, uh, micro from first aid, because you've been repeating. There's a lot of waste of time. So stick to one book and one two bag. Next slide, please. Similarly, you have resources in step two, and the story is the same. Number two, step up medicine, master the board, step up to step two, first aid, two, three, four, and five, exactly the same. So if you're reading uh, about a subject, a clinical subject in step one medicine, they, it's not going to be any different uh, in master of the boards. The format might be different, the presentation might be different, but the content is the same. So at some stage you have to decide, I'm going to take one of one of two, three, four or five. U word is a Q bank you should stick to, that is the most popular bank used by most of the students. In addition to this, they have recommended to supplement um, Pestana for surgery and case files for most, almost all core rotations, especially for OBGYN. Um, and uh, either you can use uh, videos, online med ed videos or lecturio videos. Uh, it's free, but again, stick to one. There's a recent, uh, uh, it's, it hasn't come up in this, unfortunately. There is a recent PDF that has come out, uh, put out by the USMLE, and it has 120 free questions. Are you listening, guys? 120 free questions. Go and log on, and they are very good. I have reviewed several of those. They are excellent preparation. One important point to remember for step to CK, 60 to 70 percent of the questions are I am related, so you should know what your emphasis should be in preparation during rotation shelf copy and the resources emphasize i am next slide please uh, like you had for step one there are self-assessment exam for step two ck also for the clinical knowledge uh, they are again numerically they are three four six seven and eight the most commonly one used are six seven and eight and I have seen students, again from my uh, direct communication and research, most of them use six, seven, and eight, and they take it about three to four weeks apart. So they take six and then continue preparing and do yourself uh, assessment that you're working with, or, or with you, you world or others Q bank. And then another three, four later, they go and take a seven and see the trend, see the strengths and weaknesses, make the necessary changes and continue with your study plan. This is how it works. And from what I have heard again, that UWorld itself has a self-assessment one and self-assessment two exam, and I understand they are pretty good too. So you can take, uh, in addition to this, every two to three weeks, these self-assessment exam. They're excellent learning tools. Kaplan also has a self-assessment exam. Uh, but the most commonly one that I see they are using are the uh, the NBME exams and the UWorld exam. Next slide, please. So how to get a good score on to uh, step to CK? All rotations are important, even if you don't like it. If you don't like psychiatry, you don't like pediatrics, you don't like OBGYN, it doesn't matter. You get only one chance to do your core rotations before you choose your specialty and branch off into your main field of interest. So while do your rotations, all rotations are important. So take them seriously, prepare seriously for all rotations and prepare seriously for the shelf copies. 
um, because it's so heavily weighted the clinical exam uh, in internal medicine and actual clinical which is family practice I usually advise the students to do a uh, rotation iron either just before the CK exam or do an elective extra four weeks elective just before the exam in addition to this I advise critical care for CK preparation is excellent because critical care takes care of your res uh, respiratory system hematology your cardiology uh, nutritional system nephrology neurology everything is included in critical care so I ideally uh, tell them once you are prepared you have a date plan your preparation in such a way that last two months that is you have a four weeks of I am uh, elective and a four weeks of critical care elective go ahead and take your CK you'll have an excellent performance next slide please step one and see to what's the difference step one is purely basic sciences a lot of data that nothing practical here they're beginning to introduce some clinical scenarios now step one step two is purely clinical knowledge so how does it defend it's all about time management with the step one you have the luxury of reading a lot of books data and get ready for physiology pathology in clinical skills it's all about your experience what you did during your core rotation what did you prepare for your shelf copy so it involves a lot of reading while you're taking the exam because they're all clinical scenarios it's really tiring and demanding remember NBAB exams the shelf copy exams are only four to five hours your CK exam is nine hours nine hours of continuous exam taking so it's very tiring and demanding and you may lose focus by the time you're in your sixth and seventh hour students have said I was totally exhausted at the end of the day because you're not prepared for it and that's what my number four means practice uh, another uh, trick to taking the exam so you get don't get all flustered as you're preparing and practicing try and see if you can form a differential diagnosis while you're reading the question it gives you some clues and uh, it gives you questions it gives you lab values in your question it gives you findings on the x-rays it gives you uh, in the question findings on the EKG so try and see if you can uh, form while you're reading the question a reasonable differential diagnosis of two or three so you can then go on to the next level that's why and you should practice this remember I said it's a nine-hour exam yes you get ten minutes break between each block and each block is anywhere from 30 to 40 questions but practice doing this I would strongly suggest when you're all set and you're taking these practice exam close the door and take a nine-hour exam and see how it feels okay next slide please um, now with all this preparation and knowledge let's find out where we stand in this system and to start this you need to find out where the match results from the most recent patch match results uh, pay attention to the H I wrote this was the highest number of applicants highest number of qualified certified applicants 4, 000, over 4,000 highest number of positions um, offered for matching with an increase of 6.4 with 2720 uh, residency uh, spots uh, compared to last year and match results was also one of the highest third, over 35,000 that leaves a total of close to 2,000 um, positions that did not match remember the total positions were 35,000 out of which 1897 were in the soap match the remaining 311 did not um, uh, fill the soap match why it's up to the this is a choice by it's not required it's not mandatory so some programs do not want to participate in the soap match so what does a match showed it showed 
that the US graduate match rate was 93.7, which is pretty steady for last 20 to 30 years. The number of graduates from osteopathics have been every year increasing. This was the highest this year, 90.7% who applied osteopathic graduates matched. IMGs, even the IMG was the highest match rate this year. Especially the US IMGs, the match rate was 61%, and this was the highest since 1990. So there was overall match rate of 80.0%, which was the highest. So this is a good news for the guys who are uh, applying uh, third and fourth year uh, this year. This is not only good news, and I'll now my next slide will tell tell us because of the shortage of physicians. Um, that there will be a lot more provisions available in the next four or five years. So guys, this is a great opportunity for you to get into the residency system. Next slide, please. So why, why is it a great opportunity? Because we have data now. This is not mine. This is AMC and as recent as March 2020. It predicts a shortage of 20 to 42,000 by, by 2032. That's why you'll keep seeing there'll be a lot more positions available. They are anticipating the shortage and trying to see how can they, uh, they can be pre, uh, proactive. And this shortage will continue. Uh, we have been noticing this for last 20 to 30 years, but this is the most recent data. That shortage will be 139,000 national shortage all across the board. So you are sitting right at the beginning of the shortage. Do you get good scores? You will be guaranteed. You'll stand a very good chance of getting into residency. Where will be the shortage? So when you apply, you have to keep this in mind, this data. This is not mine. This is from the AAMC. South and West will have significant shortage. Midwest will have a minimal shortage, while Northeast might have minimal to access. So when you're applying, keep this in mind. What states will show shortage? California, Texas, Florida will show most severe shortage within the next few years. And up to 2032, New York, Massachusetts, Vermont, the East Coast might show slight shortage or even in excess. Next slide, please. So keeping, uh, I won't uh, dwell too much on the CS because uh, this does not apply to third and fourth year because you're exempt. And all the old, uh, awesome graduates, Avalon graduates qualify. So we'll talk about this when the, uh, the transition year of exemption is over and you're back to taking in-person uh, clinical skill exams, this will matter. So I'll talk about this uh, later. Next slide, please. Next slide. This is also on uh, clinical uh, CS exam. Next slide. There are some more important announcements. Uh, this was the 2020 was the first MDDO combined match. That's why we had so many increase. All the DO programs that were credited by the ACGME were put into the regular match. So out of the 3,192 new programs coming from the osteopathic. Medical, uh, medical schools, 2,722 spots were added. So next year, there'll be more added because out of this 3192, there'll be some more programs that will pass their accreditation by ACGME. They'll put their uh, programs into match. So this 2072 will increase every year. Next, California, this is very important, from January 2020 has allowed IMGs who have accreditation. Remember that accreditation importance of that 15 out of 70 Caribbean schools. We happen to be one of them. Those with accreditation medical school can now apply for residency and license. California and New York used to be the most difficult states ever to get uh, uh, to apply for residency and license for all IMGs. The rules have changed. Not only that, the good news is we got the first Avalon graduate to match in 2020 in California and family medicine. Next slide, please. 
with all this background, it's important to keep the timeline for residency application in mind. The, uh, the site is already open. You have been notified in June of 2020 where you can apply, uh, get your token, get your ID number, and every two weeks, our clinical department informs the students in clinical rotation year three and four, and Marissa, thankfully, is in, in charge of that. And you'll, so please open your email and read these notifications. These are extremely important. Uh, June 30 to 73 is that's when you start getting things ready. Um, I When I used to take the MD5, and this is now I'm addressing MD1 to MD5 and all clinical students, there are two documents that you can start getting ready from day one, and that is your CV. So develop a file on your computer for a CV and a personal statement. They all take a lot of time together but start from uh, md1 and as you uh, develop some uh, issues and points add it to your cv same with the personal statement it requires several readings and reviews before you have a final statement start doing it now so you don't do it in the last month just before the rs application the date of application the uh, the documents for uh, mspe this is written by the executive dean, Dr. Arja, but you have to supply all the documents so he can write a very nice MSPE for you. The date of application is 15th of September. That hasn't changed, but because of the pandemic, the other dates have changed. Uh, how do you know where to apply? The FRIDA is a site. Uh, it is approved by uh, ACGME and all ACGME approved programs are listed on FRIDA. Uh, so you can uh, review that. Um, the uh, MSP last date used to be October 1st. They have extended it to October 21st. Uh, the last date of application used to be 31st of November, but due to pandemic, that has been extended to January 31, 2021. This is only for 2021 match. Remember that we said that in the beginning. Um, and the interviews will start in uh, uh, November to January and February of 2021. Next slide, please. Uh, February 1 is the rank order list that you and the programs have to send and the program, you can make the necessary changes by February 28. And the deadline has been now extended, used to be February 22, now it extended to March 3 because of the pandemic. And uh, you'll be notified of the SOAP. It used to be end of February, now it's 18th of March. And the match week starts on the 15th of March. Uh, and in that week, the first three days, uh, 16, 17, 18 will be the SOAP rounds. And I'll discuss a little bit about the SOAP rounds in a minute. 18th is the end of SOAP, and the match date this time is 15, 19th of uh, 2021. Next, next slide, please. So, keeping all those in mind, uh, the the shortage, the popularity of IM, the matching rates of uh, US graduates and the IMGs, these num, these this data is extremely important as to which specialty should be uh, concentrating on. Um, uh, look at the match rate of the U.S. graduates in plastic. 91% who apply U.S. graduates match, all the way down to 80% uh, of the applicants for orthopedic match. So that doesn't mean that you shouldn't apply, uh, uh, but the chances of matching are very narrow. But if you have a very good score, you should take a chance. By all means, you should apply for neurosurgery or thoracic surgery. Now go to the right side of the slide less than 45 percent of the graduates match in these uh, primary care and other specialties internal medicine pediatrics pathology family medicine prelim look at that only 24 percent of the US, us graduates match so it's important to keep these numbers in mind when you have a choice of one or two you're deciding which way should i go uh, and my scores are not that great for neurosurgery or cardiac surgery. Maybe 
I might have to go to some other specialty. So this data is important. Next slide, please. The SOAP match, how it works, once you are registered in the SOAP, um, everything, the normal match as well as the SOAP match is on R3 system. You are a, once you have the token, you're allowed to log into that. And uh, the important point about this is there are three days of match. Now remember that number, 1,872 positions were available for the SOAP match. So on day one, they will give you time. The day one um, is usually starts on 16. Next slide, please. And I'll show you how it works. Round one starts at 12 o'clock. Applicant, now uh, let me clarify one thing before we start. No program wants you to call or contact them by email about the SOAP match. Since your name is already in the SOAP match, they will contact you. They get very upset if somebody tries to call or contact them. They are not allowed to do that. So you'll receive a call at 12 o'clock and say, uh, Oh, here it is. We offer you a position in family medicine and you've got two years, two hours to make up your mind. If you do not, you are rejected. You go on to round two. So in round one, how many accept the offer determines the total number available for round two. Out of the 1872, suppose 500 accept, that leaves 1572 for round two. Okay, so remember this now. Now you also have to remember the program that already offered you in round one may not offer you in round two because you've already refused them. And you have to make up that mind within two hours. And it is the, it's all on the R3 system, acceptance and offer. Round two works the same way. Next day, March 17 is three to three o'clock. By, by uh, offered at three o'clock, within two hours, you have to reply. Now. From 1500, another 500 match. Now you're down to 1072. Third match, nine o'clock in the morning, 11 o'clock, deadline, done. So another eight to nine, now the students are getting nervous because they're on the third round and they have refused twice already. There are only 1000 left. So now you're left with the, uh, oh, maybe about eight or 900. You're now scrambling, you accept what you get. There are still some positions left not filled. Some not filled because of the student's choice and some the programs come out and say, we don't want to offer anymore. But the match, SOAP match ends 18. Next slide, please. This is how it works. Next slide. There is a similar system. I have to address this because significant number of students are from Canada. They, uh, they participate in the comms match. This is the same as our our match and very very similar requirements. There are a lot of similarities. Um, the requirements for CAM is used to be two, step one, step two. Remember for US, they have taken the step one out, they have combined the two, and now you're required to take only one exam, NCCQE. But you are required to take now NAC OSCE, which is the same as clinical skills exam. In addition, they require for all IMGs TOEFL or ILED, this is the English proficiency test exam. You have to get these. There are some, uh, it's mentioned in their, on their site that if you're a Canadian citizen, you don't have to, but the students that I have talked to who have matched in Canada, they said it's better that you take the exam because knowing that you are an IMG, even if you are a US citizen, a lot of programs require that you pass the uh, English proficiency test exam. So this. The students have told me it's easy, you go ahead and take it, and that is sent directly to the program, then you don't have to worry about it. MRCP is same as MRCE, uh, MMSP like we have. Statement is the same and letter of recommendation is the same as in, in US. Next slide, please. Uh, there are some characteristics. This is different from US now. There are about the, all provinces uh, in Canada um, follow the CAM guidelines and requirements for application, but each province has their additional requirements and you don't know. You have to log in to those programs and find out what 
Saskatchewan needs, what Vancouver requires, what Montreal requires, Quebec. Um, in addition to these, even in the same province, each program might have some additional requirements. So when you apply, you have to find out. Go on to the website and find out what else do they need in addition to what we already mentioned. In addition to this, unfortunately, each specialty have their own requirements. So I am in Vancouver, might have some additional requirements as opposed to pediatrics in Ontario. So you have to find out. Next slide, please. Timeline for CAMP is totally different this year. They used to be very close to US, but as US has also moved the date sub due to the pandemic, so has CAMP. They start the, uh, the application in token in November 2, and you can start applying. And somebody had asked me before, what about their programs like FIDA and uh, the Residency Explorer is the site where ACNG, ACGME programs are listed. They also have program descriptions listed on uh, May, uh, November 23rd, and there is a site for it online. You can go to that site and you have all listed programs and you can review them before you decide where you want to apply. January 28th is the deadline for the MS, MSPR. Remember, our was also extended. Letters of recommendations are uploaded and uh, 7th and 8th is the last date for letter of recommendations. March 8th is the national interview date. This is quite different from US. They have one single, uh, they used to be only two weeks, but they have already announced that all interviews will be virtual. So better be prepared for this and they will all be on the same day. They used to be two weeks in US. It started in October, finished in February, several months, several locations. Here, one location, national interview date, 8th of March, all virtual. Um, and uh, March 15th is the final after the interview. They finally sent the rank order list of who they have chosen and which hospitals or which provinces you go to. And the final match is April 20th as opposed to April, uh, March 19th in US. Um, one thing to remember, and this also goes for the US uh, uh, prospective candidates. If you're doing virtual format, please behave and dress as if you are doing a personal interview. So uh, good looks, decent, you know, uh, not only pants and shirt, I strongly advise tie and, uh, and jacket as if you are wearing a suit. Be very serious, make sure there is no uh, noises from the kitchen or other rooms, no kids fighting, crying, uh, shut the door as if you are going giving a personal interview so behave even for all virtual format as if you are doing a personal interview. Next slide, please. IMGs, there is some more information uh, that makes your chances better. What certification? We've already mentioned step. Almost all programs before they rank you, you might take the exam later, step, especially step to CK, but they require that you have a certification showing that you have already registered for the step to exam. Otherwise, preferably for with RS application 15th of September, you should have step one and step two scores. For this year only, two, uh, CS has been voided. Those who will be eligible in 22, depending on the pandemic situation, most likely you'll have to take regular CS like before. And if and for this, remember you, are, you have to match one of the five pathways. You have to be a graduate before January 28th, and you have to have the OET exam for English certification. You have to have certification of graduation. You have an MSPE and transcript from medical schools. That's are the requirements for ECFMG. Next slide, please. Commitment. How do you make yourself more, you know, uh, uh, eligible for the field that you are applying? Show that you are committed to that specialty, I am FM pediatrics, do some research, do some case reports while you're doing rotation. Uh, start shadowing field of interest that you have. In addition to what your uh, core rotations are, the field of electives is very important. Uh, it is generally felt 
that if you're applying for IM or FM, you will do one extra four week IM and FM. And that applies to all, all specialties that you're applying. In fact, in regular time, ER, uh, ER uh, emergency medicine required three electives in ER. Now they have cut it down to two from what I have learned uh, and read about the uh, interview process. Uh, make sure you attend grand rounds uh, and department conferences when you have time because this is where you network, meet the residents, meet the assistant program directors, meet the preceptors that even if you're not relating with. So you, you short of network yourself and getting ready. It's important, it shows interest if you join a national organization. All organizations have student uh, membership and most of them are free or very nominal charges. Find out your field of interest. Uh, American Association of Internal Medicine, join the student group. Um, if you are in a residency program where you're applying, try and show yourself or meet the chairman and the director or the assistant directors and those who are actively involved, you, you will find out where you're doing rotations and ask them for their advice. Show them interest that I'm interested in applying uh, to IM. I'll be applying to a lot of places, but I, I would, I'm really interested. I'm impressed with your program and I'll be applying. Would you give me some advice how I can improve my chances? Next slide, please. <laughs> there used to be, this is great if you have some internship, externship or, or or observerships, and these are called audition rotations. That means you're auditing in that program to apply, and all the uh, people in charge, the program directors, preceptors, uh, secretaries, residents, everybody is watching you. You're auditioning for that residency. Unfortunately, all these have been suspended in most of the programs, in, in most of the hospitals due to COVID-19. Who do you impress with these while your rotations? Chairman, program director, chief resident, other residents, nurses, coordinators, uh, you know, maintenance workers, whoever. The, the word gets to the program director as to your behavior and performance uh, and your interpersonal relationship. Next slide, please. Uh, Fourth year students, remember I already said uh, it's very important. Um, all programs require that you have uh, on your address application C2, uh, step two CK score. Uh, so don't be very late. Uh, there is one slide as I said, when I said don't be very late, it emphasizes on that slide. Uh, step two CS in regular times, there are only five centers, very difficult to schedule and it takes a much longer time to get the results back. So you better plan it. Your timeline should be such that you're not late with your CS in regular times uh, because it takes uh, six to eight weeks for step one and step two scores. It takes almost three, sometimes three months for this clinical skills scores to come back. Luckily for third and fourth year this year, it's been sustained, suspended for 12 to 18 months. You don't have to worry because all Avalon graduates qualify. IMGs, all program must have the results by mid-December. That's, I would say that's late. This is on, especially for CS. Choose proper electives, we've already mentioned, and interview dates have changed. Next slide, please. A word about personal statement that goes with your RS application. Remember, I told MD1 and MD5 students, start preparing a file on your computer, how to write a personal statement. What do you write in it? And I have got a slide from the program directors. I haven't made it this up. Show interest in your personal statement. Remember that red, it's about you. Why do you want to apply in pediatrics? Where do you, why do you want to come to our program? What did you do further? Remember, how do you make, show commitments in whatever specialty? What do you do further? I did an extra rotation. I did extra rounds. I did, uh, uh, research project in pediatrics. I wrote a case, case report. I, I attended all the conferences. This is what you do the extra because there are about 100 other uh, students applying for the same position. Why are you so different? What type of program you're looking for? What are your future plans? Uh, most of the program directors like 
that those who are training should also practice in their in their community uh, then the uh, statement that you write it should have a nice easy flow not too long not even one and a half page is too long you compress it into one to one and a half things to avoid this is very important don't try to be a smart aleck and preach in your statement they pick it up the program directors they have run read hundreds and thousands of, of these statements so if you write something nasty they'll pick it up do not put anybody down in your statement and in the interview the religion politics ethics is out sound humble you cannot be afford to be arrogant the important points be honest there is a uh, even on your uh, mspe and step exams there is a uh, place for gaps be honest why did you miss why did you miss six months you are sick you had financial difficulty whatever say it and accept it don't try and lie out of it be professional it's you can get professional advice and from your preceptors and chairmen but advice remember next slide please so this is what the program directors have notified ecfmg this is a document i got from ecfmg what do you write in your personal statement next slide please do's and don'ts be passionate show commitment why do you want to be in surgery why do you want to practice in us what's so big deal well, what about your personal experience did did that change your mind did you see a case or somebody in the family show that personal experience that that's what motivated you show that in your statement why do you want to be in this program i like it because uh, the curriculum is good i like it because the rotations are nice i like like it because i know somebody who's already joined the program and he said it's great i talked to the residents it's great it shows that you have already done research on that program be honest we already mentioned remember i said it takes a long time to write cv and and your uh, personal statements so do a lot of proofreading several times till it sounds and looks great then you said okay i got it it might take four or five readings let others read it but remember not write it you are the one who's writing it one page and future goals next slide please the program director says don't write this don't copy it from someone else don't use this profit for profit services that you give hundred dollars they'll write a uh, statement for you they'll pick it up be friendly and nice uh, where when you uh, uh, you know you, you can have your friends and family not write for you but let them read it don't list accomplishments like you do in a cv religion and politics never salary and off time you don't that mention in your statement you might ask a resident while you're having a meeting with him writing negative about anybody or any person or any programs out and don't rush it takes time next slide please where to apply this question quite often now that everything is set rs application ready msp is ready where should he apply you have the data on frida and there is a new uh, site that has come out residency explorer that gives you all the details about the programs which region do you want to apply maybe personal preference maybe family reasons maybe you have a spouse have different family and i want to go to south i want to go to west i want to go to midwest and yeah no i want a, a, a small town i want a big city so these are all choices you have to make before you start applying the program should be stable just like the medical school all programs are accredited so you want to make sure that programs are credited they're not on a one-year probation that's a red flag will are they going to meet that requirements are they come out of probation or not or you find out you joined first year and second year the program is gone yeah you need to find out it's very subtle with your residents you can ask in the interview even to the program director is our faculty stable what it means is they are interviewing the program and assistant program director and you find out they have a plan to move out of the community next year so you want to make sure the faculty is stable get a graduates uh, we have developed a list from 2015 for all the avalon graduates 
if the airline graduates have done well in this uh, program, when you get a, a ERAS application, the program director says, oh, you know, the uh, John Smith is from Avalon. He's doing pretty great. Let me look at this application from, uh, uh, you know, from uh, Sajjad or whoever or Chaudhary. Let me take a look at it because he's also from Avalon. We have developed a list and it's available to you. A satisfied resident, it's important to find out the presidents. How's the program? Are you guys all happy? I am, there are certain IMG friendly states and programs. And this is also available on Frida, but friendly states, you'll be surprised. I'll show you the list as to why I highlighted that. Next slide, please. Okay, again, this is not mine. This is from AMA. Four tips for all IMGs, apply early. Why did I say apply early? Remember you mentioned, I mentioned that? All 65% of the letters for interview go out by the end of October. So if you are all set, your documents are ready, you have the scores, don't procrastinate, don't wait for anything. Apply 15th of September, that's the date you're applied. You stand a better chance of getting an interview. Number two, there are IM IMG friendly programs and this data is available on, I has told you, Frida is CSMG. Number three, there are certain IMG friendly specialties and we mentioned that. Remember, only 45% of the US graduates match in those specialties. You remember those? IM, FM, pathology, neurology, surgery and pediatrics. So if you have a choice, try and apply in these specialties. Interpersonal interaction, don't fake it. Don't fake it, don't lie, remember? Don't lie, don't fake it. And, and this is for everyone. Just because you did not match this year, don't let it derail your plans. Then you have now another year to work. Do some extra locations. Never sit at home and do nothing. They want you to show for the next time when you apply again for a mat that you've been actively busy especially clinical involvement, do rotations, do uh, internships. If you can get in the hospital, nothing, nothing like it. Do some research, do some publication, show them that you've been busy. And this is the difference from your failed match to a match now because I have done this thing extra. Next slide, please. This is from the program directors. I didn't make it up. You can go on the site, find out the program directors want the i have selected top 10 they had top 30 for interview and top 30 for the residency so what are they looking for they're looking for usmle step score and everybody knows now the cutoff point is now 2020 and we've had students under 2020 and from january 2022 there won't be a score for step one it will be pass and fail but then the score for CK becomes so important because that's the only number, numerical number the program directors for have, will have to shortlist you. Because step one, oh, it's pass and fail. It's like anybody else. Thousands, others have passed and failed. So what is uh, differentiates is the CK score. It becomes so important now. Letter of recommendations, remember? Uh, the extra elective you do, you get an extra letter of recommendation. So take your electives seriously. MSPE, we already mentioned, start working on it. Written, done by the executive dean, but most of the documentation or extra volunteer work you have done. You have done uh, uh, some other courses before you did. You did some master's program. All this has to be shown to the uh, executive dean so he can write a letter for you. So it's up to you to get that documentation. Uh, step to CK, uh, grades in clerkship, personal statement, we mentioned this all, I've just selected on the top 10. Next slide, please. And these are the importance as to after you have interviewed, what are the chances that you'll be ranked for the residency? These are the important points because once you have interviewed, they don't care about step one score, step two score, step three, what, whatever it is. Now it's something different. It's your personality. You are looking for a job. They are looking for an employee and a team member to work in their program. Can you 
can you match can you get along oh. you know i have heard so many times including myself i got a 250 from harvard or yale and i've got a 230 from avalon but every week i am arguing with the guy from harvard every week i'm arguing and every every second sentence he said i'm from harvard i don't have to do this so the program directors say i would rather have an avalon 230 who will be a team member that i can train so interaction with faculty during interview interpersonal skills interaction with Howard staff remember these three this is all team membership how do you behave it's your personality can you get along with it are you fighting with everyone every day so feedback from residents is very important and remember how it has moved down the step one has moved down from number one to number six next slide please so these are the match list for our Avalon graduates and the reason I have marked this in red is our students do not rotate in New York, uh, New Jersey, Calif uh, California, Texas, Florida, uh, Pennsylvania, Indiana, and few other states. There are about six or seven. But look at our the facts. Look at our match. And we are so pleased that every year we match in these states where they don't allow us to do our clinical rotations, but they accept our residents when you apply. And which are the states? Look at that. 2015, Florida, Florida, New York, Pennsylvania. Next slide, please. 2016, New York, New York, Florida, Pennsylvania. Um, and there are several others. There's a New Jersey here we didn't highlight. Next slide, please. Same 2017. Next slide, please. 2018 same uh, texas we are getting more and more in texas and florida great we are very happy texas new york pennsylvania new york new york texas next slide please 19 same new york connecticut idaho all new programs louisiana new premier programs they are recognizing it pennsylvania geisinger medical medical center one of our students matched this year in Geisinger. Next slide, please. And look at 2020. Look at 2020, all reds, all over the place. We are, it is great that our graduates are spreading into all these states that say, we don't want you to come and rotate here, but we'll take you as a resident. Thank you very much. Next slide, please. Look at that. Look at that. It's great. Texas, Florida, Florida, Texas, Florida, New York, New York. And a lot of students ask me if, when, if I happen to talk to them at council, they said, yeah, but uh, we don't have any recognition or accreditation in New York. New York has the highest number of residency positions in the country. They have, last time I checked, and it's increased now, 59 IM programs and one of the program I know, my uh, niece's son, has 25 spots in one, one program. They have so many. So I tell them, let them not recognize you. Go ahead and apply. The most you can get is a rejection. But the fact is, look at the New, New York we have matched. Only on the second page, one, two, three have matched in New York. They're willing to take our graduates. Next slide, please. So interview process. So uh, you have sent your application, you have selected the programs, everything is good. Now you're getting ready for interview. Pre prepared quite a lot of programs. They haven't announced yet, just like Canada, they could be online, virtual interview. Some will be in person. So when the, and they say, when does the interview start? It starts when you write your first, because of the pandemic, otherwise you make a phone call, that phone call is the start of your interview or first contact of the program system is the time you start your interview. Pre-interview, there's a dinner night before and an importance I'll tell you in the next slide. The interview day, be prepared. People are, I have seen students, I got a flight at three o'clock. I have to, I have to go. Uh, or 
uh, I'm coming late at night. The interview starts at eight. There's no such thing. This is your, you're talking about your livelihood here, your career here for rest of your life. You don't make other commitments. You better be prepared for the whole day. If you're driving, fine, come night before or come two, three hours early so you get freshen up, get ready to come and not running around. Uh, uh, you're parking, you're late and you're running and the parking lot attendant in the hospital says, sir, you can't park, that's not for the students. And you, uh, you start using expletive and four letter words. I can guarantee you 100% that will reach the program director's office. Interview, two to four individuals will interview and approximately 10 to 15, 20 minutes at a time. Who will interview? The program director, the assistant program director, preceptors, and in some programs, senior residents. Uh, after the interview, make sure you write the thank you letter and I've got a format to show you. Next slide. Um, uh, these are the common questions they ask. Tell me about yourself. Why are you applying? What are you looking for in our program? Uh, they may ask you now, you know, with the COVID, if even in a virtual, they might ask you about the COVID. Uh, how do you handle if there are disagreements? What do you do if your senior resident is not wearing a mask? He hasn't got a PPE. So all these you have to be ready and prepared with. Remember one thing, during the interview, even if you're not being interviewed, you're in a, uh, in a conference room waiting or in the night at the dinner, no smoking, no drinking, even if they offer, and please don't use any four letter words. Even if you're talking to yourself, if somebody hears that, it will get to the program director, guaranteed. Next slide. Importance of night before. Remember we mentioned, not many students attend the dinner functions. I'll read this, it's important. The day before the interview and tours of the residency, this is very important as it shows the directors your level of interest. They have arranged a dinner for you to meet the faculty and the residents and you said, sorry, I'm busy, I'm not coming. It desires to be in their residency program. It is also a great time to mingle with the current residents who will be in attendance. Usually what happens, program director and the chairman and a couple of preceptors might come for this dinner and they say hello to everyone and the program director might talk to you for about 10 minutes and they all leave. And now you're, leave, you're all with your residents. And please don't order a whiskey or a brandy or a beer. Please stick to your ginger ale or a Coke because if you get two in and start rambling around some four letter words that's the end of your interview. So enjoy the dinner, but don't enjoy the drink. Your time with the residents is pivotal. They use this time to evaluate you. The senior residents before the interview will say, I met uh, Nancy Smith there. She was great. She had good questions. Keep it in mind. Oh, I met, uh, uh, you know, uh, John there. Uh, uh, and he was great. He showed interest. He had all the research done on our program. I met this guy, he didn't have any questions and I was talking to the other guy, he was using uh, four letter words, F this and F that, and I heard that. So that is the importance of the night before. Next slide, please. This is tips from a resident. How do you improve your chances? Do away rotations, we talked about the sub-internships. Letter of recommendations, we said that you're allowed four, four letters of recommendation for each application, out of which the general expectation is you'll have at least two out of those four in your field of interest. So if you're applying for IM or FM, you should have two out of four from two different preceptors, preferably different hospitals. That carries a weight. I know a guy who applied for IM, never had an IM letter of recommendation, sent one from radiology. So it shows your interest. Uh, communicate interest in your personal statement. We already mentioned work research and we already mentioned that. Uh, practice interview, yeah. Be personable, attentive, smile, professional and courteous. Be nice to everyone. You'll be surprised when you're touring the hospital. The uh, 
the person from the housekeeping might be clearing the floor and then there are about 10 students with you and you tell the guy using a four letter word and said look at this guy it is coming in my way that will get to the program director guaranteed uh, plan for the fourth year carefully next slide please and finally the thank you letter so those who are doing multiple interviews i stress take a pen and a notebook with you every person that you see make a note name or well, what are they are they resident are a preceptor what his specialty is and most importantly the program not the program director or the assistant program director the program coordinator who manages the whole program and the system this is the secretary who is a program coordinator in the department of you which you have applied so make sure you send a thank you note to her as well as to the preceptors and the program directors who have interviewed you so that means you have to know the name and in your letter you also mention it was great i like the setup of the wards and an intensive care uh, the residents were great uh, i saw i uh, saw the layout of the uh, the critical care and the or i like your curriculum i like the rotations that you offer and you even offer an outside rotation because you don't have it but then we can do some more research so mention that in your thank you letter that you have actually seen this and get reference to it so mention the hospital's accolades reference residency program relate back to how you would thrive in that program you love the setup and you talk to the residents they are so happy all of them example give the example mention friend. if you write some details with names and incidents that you have picked up that means you have paid attention next slide please and thank you uh, your feedback is important to us so if you have any questions you're most welcome thank you dr gani uh, that was wonderful and informative session it seems we have received a a very good number of questions i will read out loud if you if you can take it now or maybe we, i will, i can compile these questions and send it over to you and then you can reply every single student also so yeah, that's what i have done in the past uh, i'll answer as many as we can but if we have too many uh, i promise you that i'll uh, reply to each and every one of you so let's start sure so let me uh, just sort out the question and uh, remove the repetition of the question. Okay, so the first question is, uh, what resources do you recommend to use while in the first two years of medical school that can be used alongside coursework, but also to prepare the mind for step one? I'm starting in September MD1. Yes. Um, um... That's a great question, and I think we have already instituted that policy. At the time of your orientation, when you come to join Avalon and on the Curacao Island, they have a whole day of orientation. And part of the orientation, the importance of medical education, test taking, and preparation. And now I think the the basic science faculty and uh, all the uh, you know the uh, deans, Dr. Arja. Dr. Bala and other uh, people who are responsible have in their uh, orientation the importance of, and I agree with them that you should start from day one. I suggest an MD1 now. This is totally different from what you have done in your grad, uh, undergraduate school or coming from uh, high school. Medical education is 100% difference. You may have heard, done some physiology, some anatomy, and some diseases and things in your school or undergraduate. But medical education, starting day one, you'll find out it's very demanding, stressful, and very busy. So keeping that in mind, I don't expect that you will start doing this in your first uh, uh, few months. But after you have had few courses in different subjects, and you're getting a hang of it what this is all about that's when i'll start looking into uh, the resources 
and at the moment there are books available you can do your world you'll learn, but we have a free lecture here available and i am telling the md1 student this is my recommendations i don't know what the other faculty is saying. just do five questions on the subject you have already done in the first two months just start doing five questions you'll get the idea as to what is expected what is involved read the answer in detail read the explanation and gradually as you progress increase that five a week to ten a week to 20 a week and i expect by the time you're in md3 and 4 you'll be so well prepared for md5 this is how you do it gradually next question please sure uh what is the uh, match rate of avalon university uh match rate uh, every year we've been increasing every year we've been increasing and we have finally made in the first year time over i think it's 73 percent the general expectations of imgs and all caribbean schools is around between 65 to 70 and some are very low some are higher but the cutoff point even the accreditation agencies is this 70 and we've passed that this year and we are proud to say that next uh, next question please thank you uh, could you please explain what soap match is soap match is a match that the uh, applicants have not matched in the main match same in the calm remember the canadian match so they, they the bottom line is you did not match but there are still a lot of empty uh, slots available for residency. There's still unfilled spots. And they give you a chance, they call it the soap match, that you participate in that. And the unfilled positions were over 2000 in 2020, out of which 1,872 spots decided to participate in the soap match. So once you are in the SOAP match, you automatically, you qualify for that 1,872 positions that are still open for matching. And the process goes, I've already described it over three days, and you have to make up your mind when you offer the match, uh, offer the position to you in the SOAP match. Next question, please. So do you register for soap and regular match at the same yes. time? Yes, you do. And uh, once it's confirmed, they will confirm you. I think I, I don't have the slide open now. On the 8th of March, remember the match week starts on the 15th. The soap match is 16, 17, 18. The match date is 19th. On the 8th of March, you will be notified that you are a, you're also registered in the soap match. So due to some reason you don't match, you're already notified and you're already in the match. So due to, if you don't match on the 19th of March, I would sit in front of the computer on 16, 17 and 18. And remember, it's the R3 system you have to open. You get ready to open during that period of time, the dates and the timings are already mentioned, but uh, they, will, they will let you know. They will let you know the whole format and the timings. Uh, if you are participating in the match, sit in the front of computer. Please don't go away to a movie or somewhere else. Just sit there, and if you get a chance, an opportunity, if it suits you, decide. You get only two hours to say yes or no. Next question, please. When do you uh, do the ECFMG certification? Will that be when you sign up for the step one, or you need to submit a transcript each time? No, you don't. All the data is available at in our clinical department. So if you pass step one, the scores will be reported to the clinical department. So it's preferable, I would say 80 to 90% of the times to have both step one and step two scores when you apply on the 15th of September. Now, due to whatever reason, if you're late, you know, you will not be certified without step one. But even for step two, you have to have a date of registration uh, that you are taking it in uh, uh, October 10th. So you have already registered. You have to show that 
to the uh, clinical department and the ECFMG. The requirements for certification, remember, that you will be graduating in that year of that current year, which is usually May in our in Avalon. So in 2020 for 2021 match, May 2022nd, you'll have documentation that you'll graduate. You'll have an MSPE from the executive dean. You'll have a transcript from our clinical department. You should have the step one and step two scopes. If you have all four, the ECFMG will certify you. Next question, please. Sure. So if the step two is still suspended or canceled for students that would be applying for 2022, does this mean it won't be required for the year's match? Also, no. do they no, have sorry. any specific? Yes. You can, we can break down this do question into two, Dr. Janice. Long question. What is the second part? The first part I got it. What is the second part? Also, do they have any specific estimated date for when the step two CS exam will reopen for IMG students? Good. Good. Okay. The first one is all the changes related to step two CS. We are talking about clinical skills, not the CK now. CK is still same. It's become more important. For 2022 because now that's the only number that will be visible so for cs it's suspended for 12 to 18 months and that was suspended long time ago so we've already passed about four or five months so it will apply only to the academic year 2020 2021 not to 2022 now the, whether will this and they haven't announced second part of the question the date for cs for 2022 and what their plans are Depending on the pandemic, if it stays bad, I wouldn't be surprised if they extend this into 2022 academic year. So far, they haven't. So this is only for 2021 match. And that, that involves our third and fourth year students. That's why they need to be aware of this, the five pathways that we do qualify start looking into the OET, the uh, language test exam. Uh, you've already met the requirement of graduation uh, 2018. You don't need to worry. You already met the requirement credited med school. You don't need to worry. So the only thing left is the certification of uh, clinical skills. If you have passed the OSCE in year three or year four, you got the certification. So you, you're all set really, the Avalon graduates. You should be thankful that you met the requirements completely, the third pathway for 2021 only. What happens in 2022? They haven't announced anything yet. Next question, please. What is MSPE? MSPE is, is, a, um, is it's a documentation submitted. Uh, it's a student's performance evaluation. So, uh, it, it is submitted by the, it used to be called uh, Dean's Letter. Now the Dean submits it in our school and most of the schools, Executive Dean submits it. The same as MSPR and that is Student's Performance Record. So, and this has to go for ESC family certification and this has to go with the RS application on the 15th of September. Next slide, next question, please. How do you apply for both match in Canada and US? If the Canadian match is later than the US, do you put it, it on hold and wait for the results for Canadian? No, 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 you follow the deadline. I have the whole deadline. You can apply to both. We've had students apply to both. In fact, in regular years, there was hardly a difference of two to three weeks between Canadian and US match and the students still applied. Just go on and follow the guidelines for Canada as well as for US and you can apply for both. There is no rule that you cannot except you have to meet the requirements. You have, uh, they do not accept, uh, let me clarify this. They do not accept step one and step two if you're applying for a Canadian match. They want their MCCQA, remember? They want their MCCQA, which is the same combined step one, step two for Canada. And they want NAC-OSCE, 
which is same as our uh, clinical skills step to CS. You have to get theirs. They won't accept that. And number three, the addition is they want an English proficiency test. If you meet those three requirements, you're eligible to apply for Canadian match and you've already uh, eligible to apply for US match because you have got to step one, step two, CS. You got the transcript, you have done MSP, you're certified by ECFMT. Next question, please. Does Avalon offer external or extra rotation after graduation? We don't offer, but especially if you're not matched or if you have time, maybe you're, you're a fantastic and lucky student, you got back to back rotations and you've got three or four months left and you finish your rotations. I usually uh, give them several options. I usually tell the students if they have, suppose they finish everything, all the documents, everything is set and you finish your electives by December and now you've got January, February, March before your rotation. So I tell them either you do extra rotation, we don't arrange it, but if you show interest, we can recommend to you and you have to arrange it with the preceptor, contact our clinical department so we can certify that rotation. It's not part of your credit, but it's an extra rotation. <coughs> Excuse me. And number two, either that or I'll tell them, you know, find out some you can research or write a case report. Or uh, number three, I tell them it's important that you keep yourself busy. And number four, most important, and I tell them a lot of people, three months is a pretty good time. If you are ready, remember the word, if, if you feel comfortable and ready, take your step three. Take your step three, you've got three or four months left. This is taken almost by 100% by US graduates in the residency. Lot of IMGs are doing step three that increases your chances a little bit more. Why? Why is it so important? because it is required by ACGME that all residents, IMG and US, pass step three exam in their, before their second year. If you do not, you lose your residency in second year and you're out. So some program directors, and I've seen this in our program, say, oh boy, this guy's already done three. I don't have to worry about step three, whether he passes or not in your second year because it's difficult for them to fill a position in second year both for the program as well as it's difficult for the student because they're kicked out so the importance of part three is there so if you're ready if you have three four months i would say work hard and take your part if you fail it doesn't matter you can still take it but if you pass it you have an advantage okay next question are multiple failed attempts of step one considered if it's over 10 years old? Yes, the, the, in fact, the, uh, you pass the year, even the ECFMG will not recognize your uh, step one score. It's seven years. Seven years is the time where you, otherwise you'll have to take all steps all over again. And for those who are, who had this question, I would strongly recommend it that before you ta start taking your step, I would take our MD course, our MD5 score at Avalon. Do your introduction to clinical medicine. Do your Kaplan course. Do all your exams for MD5. Pass your NBME again and then take step one. So 10 years, definitely step scores are out. Next question, please. And this is the last question of today's webinar, Dr. Gani. Okay. Uh, if starting clinical rotations in September 2020, will we still be on time for taking step to CK and able to apply for match in 2020, 2022? 22, yes. Uh, I had a very similar scenario, unless this is the same student who's starting in September. There are the other students starting too. Um, if you work 72 weeks starting in September, uh, the date of application for 2022 will be September 15, 2021. Okay, so by that time, you should have your step one and step two. 
okay okay your step two could be a little late by that time you must have all your core rotations done that's 48 weeks so start working from september 2020 48 weeks take you to september 2021 you haven't done your electives 24 weeks yet but you can apply and start doing your electives so it's a very close call but you can do it you have to have back-to-back -back rotations you don't miss too many days you have to pass your step one and step two all this before the time match comes in march 2022 so you, you can do it but it's very close i just uh, counseled one of the students with this scenario uh, but you have to meet all the requirements you can't say i'm taking three months off to prepare for my step two that means you are not doing any rotations so your 48 weeks takes you to september 2021 and another 24 weeks takes you to the almost end of the year um, so you will be finishing your course and exams and everything and when you apply for 2022 you'll be ready for the interview in december january now it's it's interesting you can continue doing your electives if you're short of time even up to end of april i won't you know i'll be pushing too much for may the ecfmg will certify you in may you graduate remember you have to graduate uh, our graduation is in may and the graduation certificate uh, has to have to have ECMG certificate. So you can do your electives right up to April and still submit it and you'll be eligible to graduate and eligible for ECMG certification. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Gani. I would like to say thank you all of you for joining us today, Uni, and would like to say special thanks to uh, Dr. Gani for such an informative and very uh, in, uh, impressive information about uh, residency match and all the questions uh, uh, asked by the students uh, we do have like a, a lot of other questions which i will forward it to dr gani and dr gani will be reaching out to you through email and so that's it from uh, our side i hope you have enjoyed the whole webinar session dr. thank you gani, thank you for your part. help me. thank you for your help thank you. you're welcome good night bye good night